name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Good morning to you all on this rainy, wet day where God is raining on us his blessing. And rain is a sign of blessing, okay? Because it's the water that we need to drink, and the plants need to grow and give us food to eat. In the month of Tut, we are in the month of Tut, as you know. And we're presented in the whole four weeks of the gospel of the month of Tut. We're presented in the four weeks the theme of salvation. Salvation as planned by God the Father. Salvation as planned by God the Father. The first Sunday, does anybody remember what we read last Sunday? It was about St. John the Baptist. And we read of the work and the witness of him, St. John, who is the link between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And he preached repentance. He called for the straightening of the path for the Lord because the Lord is actually coming. And his witness and his presence reveals to us the wisdom of God the Father because their people repented. And at the end of that passage, he says wisdom is justified by her children. The wisdom of God okay, is justified. He's now coming out and he's saying, I'm sending you my only begotten son. And this is the true wisdom, the wisdom of his salvation. I'm going to skip today and go to the third Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to hear about the salvation and conversion of a sinful man named Zacchaeus. The fourth Sunday of Tut, we're going to hear about the salvation of the sinful woman in the house of Simon the Pharisee. So in all four Sundays, we find the theme of salvation. We find the theme of salvation. Today, we arrive at the second Sunday in which we see the salvation spoken of but in two ways. Okay, I'm going to try to get through the two ways if we have time. First, by the words of the Lord in the verse 23 and 24, which is what I will read to you now. Then he turned to his disciples and he said, Blessed are the eyes which see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not, a, have not seen it. And to hear what you hear and have, a, have not heard it. So the Lord is essentially telling them in a very, very direct way, in a very direct way, you are very blessed. You're blessed because you see, you're witnessing my presence. You're witnessing and hearing my words. And many people heard the words of the coming of the Messiah. Actually, biblical scholars tell us that there are over 330 different prophecies in the Old Testament about the coming of the Lord in the flesh. 330. It's a lot. It's actually over 330. Does anybody remember, anybody remember the, the first ever prophecy about the Lord and who it was spoken to? Anybody? Had the fekir? Hmm? Eve? Hmm. Another guess. Hmm? Who, who did, who, or God said the first prophecy to who? Or to what? To what? Hint. To who, actually? No, not Adam and not Eve. Huh, the serpent. Somebody said it. The serpent. He said it first to the serpent. And he said, this is the first prophecy out of the 330 plus. So he speaks to the serpent. And he says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between you and her seed, your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his a heel. That was the first prophecy of the coming of the Lord and the struggle of good and evil. No. 
besides the Virgin and Saint Joseph and the shepherds who saw our Lord Jesus Christ and held him and fulfilled the pronounced prophecy who who besides Saint Joseph the Virgin and the shepherds saw our Lord and held him in his arms who who Simon or Simeon Simeon the elder he said let your servant depart in peace for my eyes have what seen your salvation which have prepared before the face of all people a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and so forth so to the disciples to so to the disciples was given the things not even given to the people of old not even given to any of the great people of the Old Testament. Blessed are you, for you see and you hear me. You're seeing and you're hearing me. As if the Lord is revealing the secrets just to his holy apostles. And this is why the apostles in the church are at a high level. Yeah, you notice where their placement is on the iconostas, above my head to my right and my left. They are the foundation of the church after the cornerstone, our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and so you know, my beloved, also, the entire New Testament was written by eyewitnesses of the Lord. Every book in the New Testament was written by someone who actually saw and heard the Lord. Okay, again... I'm just trying to give you an understanding of when the Lord said, blessed are the eyes that see the things you see and the ears that hear the things you hear. He's saying, this is a big thing. I'm here. This is all the prophet. I've now fulfilled the prophecies. I've now fulfilled the prophecies. So in today's gospel, salvation comes through the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's saying it himself. The second reference to salvation in today's gospel is verse 21. And it says here, In that hour, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Why did he rejoice? Why did he rejoice? Because right before this gospel was read, okay, it is from Luke 10, 21 to 28. If you look at chapter 10 and go to verse 13, 14, and 15, he was rejected in the three places where he always was. Capernaum, Chorazin, and Bethsaida. Okay? So the Lord rejoiced. Why did he rejoice? Like he's saying that right after they rejected him. So he's saying, he's, he's rejoicing. Why? Try to follow me because this is very interesting and shows you how we need to trust in the plan of God. Christ rejoiced in the wisdom of God, the Father, who planned the economy, who planned the, the act of salvation, that the truth of Christ's presence would be hidden from the wise, hidden from the prudent, those who feel that they're self-important, prideful, sophisticated, okay? But they're revealed to who? Babes, babes. The Lord gives grace to the humble. He loves the little children. He loves a person, an adult, who is simple like a baby, who trusts in him like a little baby, who's humble like a little baby, who has a loving heart to everyone like a little baby, okay? Babies are very, very humble. And when I have a humble heart, I can then see who God is. I can see the work of God in my life. But if, I'm, if I have a haughty heart, I won't be able to see anything that the Lord has planned. So his joy... He's saying he rejoiced in the Spirit because you've hidden these things from the wise and prudent and revealed them to the little ones. Because of such is what the kingdom of heaven. Remember his disciples? 
his disciples tried to push away all the kids. And then what? He said, no, let the kids come. Of such is the kingdom of heaven. So he's speaking about all of these things as a way to show you only he is the way to the Father. Only he is the fulfiller of the prophecies. And the second thing he's saying is that we should rejoice that he, even though we didn't see him or hear him, he revealed himself to us, our church, our people, our country, because of the humility and the babe likeness that we have. So today we rejoice in the Lord who revealed himself. Today we hear the words of joy and the words that many people, countless people, have a have desired to hear. So I just I didn't really do much in the sermon except give you a sermon. I'm sorry, give you a, a survey of what to kind of think about when you go back home and you read today's gospel. So perhaps maybe you should think and discuss this with your family when you get home today. Because after all, today is the Lord's day, right? We spend the whole day with the family doing lordly things. Okay? We spend the day of the Lord doing the work of the Lord. Okay? Together. And the best way to do that is to take your Bible and sit and read it again and then discuss all the readings in today's liturgy as well as the gospel of the liturgy. So I'm going to leave you with two questions about this very simple Bible, this very simple passage. What will you do? What is your reaction that you have been given a portion or access to that salvation? What is your reaction to it? Because salvation is an invitation. Just like when you go to a wedding, you're invited to a wedding, what do you always get? R-S-V-P. What does that mean? Anybody know what that means? It's actually French, right? Anybody knew that? or Respond, s'il vous plaît. Right? Respond, please. Okay, the RSVP. So the Lord, he's saying, I'm rejoicing because I'm revealing myself to you. I've revealed myself to you. Okay, where's your RSVP? What are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? God invites Levi. He invited Levi. Remember Levi? Okay, he invited Levi. And what did Levi, who is Matthew, what did he do? He got up, and he what? He left his tax-collecting job. He invited St. Peter, St. John, St. James, and they got up, and they left their nets, and they left their father. He invited Zacchaeus, and he came down from the tree. His invitation, my beloved, still stands. Today's gospel shows also one final thing I want to say shows the divinity of our Lord when he says all things have been delivered to me by my Father and no one knows who the Son is except who the Father and who the Father is except the Son and the one to whom the Son will reveal him okay so has he revealed the God to us? Yes, he has. Okay, We read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verse 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has what? Declared him. He has revealed him. And so, my beloved, our, our joy should be in the fact that the Lord took time, he fulfilled the prophecies, he came and he revealed himself and the economy of salvation for us or to us through his divine love and compassion for us. May the Lord grant us that we 
accept this invitation and that we understand that we are blessed to hear these things and to see these things because not everybody heard these things and not everybody saw these things. Okay, maybe we didn't see it by the eyes of our physical eyes, but we see it with the eyes of what? The eyes of faith. May the Lord fill your eyes and strengthen your eyes of faith to see him and to see his salvation and to respond to his salvation all the days of your life. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.